Hello, and welcome to In His Image broadcast, hosted by Evangelist Stacy Rhodes. Glory, give him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For have not I declared that the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. I've spoken and said that the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the adoption of sons. Knowing this hour that even as I pierced the side of Adam and caused the bride to come forth, and even as I pierced the side of my son and caused the bride to come forth, know that in this hour I'm piercing the nations, that my church, that my house might come forth. Know that in this hour that the church shall become called that which is borderless, for Bethel shall arise in this hour, the place where God is, the place... Hi, and welcome to In This Image Broadcast on today. As always, I just want to say happy Friday. Hope your weekend was blessed. Hope your week was blessed. I hope God did something great, something tremendous for you over this weekend. Um, he's a wonderful God. Um, he's just amazing in everything that he does. And like I said, I don't just say it because I have nothing else to say. I say it because I love him and because he's just that good of a God to me. Um, so on today, as always, I just want to say, you know, send some shout outs to my own pastor, Pastor Sam Moore, Lady LaShawn Moore, and my Conqueror's Church family over at the Star Theater on Gratiot and 15 Mile every Sunday at 11 a.m., um, awesome word of God. Always you get a good word. Um, good people. Got to come out and just try us one day. Again, that is Conqueror's Church. We are located right now at the Star Theater, um, 11 a.m. service on Gratiot at 15 Mile right there in Clinton Township, Michigan. Just want to send a shout out to just so many different people as always. Apostle Kevin Billion on today. I just want to say, hey, thank you man of God for all that you've done, all that you've sold in my life. Uh, New Covenant of Peace, Bishop Anthony Russell, his wife Valerie Russell, Pastor Ruben and Dr. Ella Edwards, just great men and women of God alone by themselves. Um, Jordan, Jordan Missionary back at this church. Um, that whole staff over there as well. Faithful Priest Ministries, Evangelist Denise McCray. Um, awesome woman of God just as well. Saved by Grace Ministries, ran by Pastor Sherry and Dantes Williams. Awesome man and woman of God as well. So many of them. The grafted word. Uh, Pastor Cusfield over there, him and his wife Crystal. Um, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor, as well on today. I um, want to get a shout out, like I said, to uh, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Sanjay Lakani, um, Dr. Um, Edward Dabrowski, uh, these are just some people that I just love and I just think highly of, so I always want to send a shout out to them. People down at the Ronald McDonald House, Kingdom Outreach also, I want to send a shout out to him. Haven, um, doing awesome things in, uh, in that area of just domestic violence. Uh, thank God for them. Just so many people doing great things. It's just amazing. Uh, Deacon Sylvester over at Hair Creations, want to send a shout out to him just as well. Tristan over at Sunoco Gas Station in, on Metro Parkway and Grosbeck. You guys just got Got to take a ride down gross back it's just so many great people over there so many people over there uh i want to send a shout out to my young ladies over at tim horton uh they do our wednesday connections uh we do a bible study over there at the one right there nearest by 15 mile uh they're just so nice and so pleasant to us uh, i want to send them a shout out just as well um norm over at low auto loans on gross back like i said you just got to take a ride up and down great gross back highway it is some very friendly people out that way and i just want to get them shots out just as well so on today I just want to talk about a couple of things on today and it's really really just talking about entering the rest of God you know I was just asking God what did he want me to say on today because I was had I was supposed to have a guest on today um, but they had to cancel um, due to some things that was going on and of course the power outage and all that type of stuff over out there where we live at um, so but God is so amazing. And I was just, you know, asking him, well, what do you want me to talk about on today, um, God? Because I had a whole nother agenda. Um, and he was talking about the rest of God. He was saying that he, his people are just struggling, that all people are just struggling, not just the unbelievers, but the Christians as well. You know, we're struggling when we don't really have to struggle as much as we're struggling because we won't enter into that rest of God. We won't enter into that place that gives us peace, which is God. You know, at the end of the day, He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God, and he wants us to find rest in him. He really does want us to find rest in him. So like today, I'm just going to take a moment and talk about entering into the rest of God because he said people are just got so much going on. They're overwhelmed. They're stressed. They're fearful. But we shouldn't be like that. You know, 
that's not the word of God. You know, God loves us, and he loves us with an everlasting love. And, you know, first of all, we don't to put our trust in, in any man or anything to where it overtakes the place of God. Because when we do, it always usually disappoints us. We always feel a little abandoned, rejection, hurt, pain when those situations happen. But, you know, even though to the person that's not saved, it's biblical. And you don't understand why you go through it as much, but that's why. You know, because the word of God truly is true. And um, I just want to take a moment, like I said, just to talk about the rest of God, you know. Um, and I also just look, want to give you a couple of definitions of what rest is. Rest, it means to cease work or stop movement in order to relax, to refresh oneself, and to recover their strength. Um, I'm just giving you different definitions. To be supported or something to put stable, that's stable in the place to support you. Um, it's say also just a time of ceasing, from stopping, from engaging in any type of activity, physical, mind, in your mind, just to find rest in stressful activities. You know, so first of all, we, I guess we need the definition of what rest is, you know, because like I said, it's so many different arguments about the Word of God, um, and I'm not here for a debate, and I don't debate the Word of God, you know, because, you know, so many people will say different things, you know. Um, you know, like the Bible say, well, if a man don't work, he don't eat. Yep, that is the word of God. Uh, the Bible say without faith, faith, yep, all the works we try on is pretty much dead. But at the end of the day, you know, I think sometimes we take the scriptures out of order, out of content of what God is really trying to say to us. And, you know, he wants to give his people rest. He wants you to stop struggling with uh, finances. He wants us to stop struggling with worry about sickness, our children, our homes, how we're going to, you know, maintain this, our neighborhoods, our communities. You know, at the end of the day, we have to believe that the word of God is true if you are a believer. But if you're not a believer, you can say, well, well, how can I believe something that I don't even believe in? Which is true. So I do get that understanding. But, you know, the Bible talks about us just turning these battles over to God. And I think as a believer, and I always talk about myself because I don't want to offend anybody. That's why I say I only can tell you my story. I can't tell you anybody else's pretty much. Maybe a couple of my children. So I share those sometimes. <laughs> they don't always like it, but I do. Um, so we have to get to that place where we understand um, what God is saying to us and you know I remember my battles and I remember my struggles you know being a single mother of five children I understand um, that sing being a single mom I understand the tr stress of having to maintain a job take care of your home take care of your children get to every sport event every uh, spelling bee any basketball games for all your children you know so I understand the stress of that I also understand the stress, like I said, of not only maintaining my own children, but maintaining every niece and pretty much nephew I had that lived with me and I had to take care of too. So I, I understand that struggle of being overwhelmed. I understand that struggle of being stressed out. I, you know, I think about some times where I had to leave my job and go home because nobody was there watching their kids, you know. Um, and I would have to leave and go home. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to lose my job. And I, I just understand stress. I understand stress to the max, you know, and I just thank God that he gave me peace in that, that he get me to that place where I understood peace. Um, I thank God when he got me through one of the worst times in my life of, of being sick and being in so much pain to where uh, I, you couldn't think. I was in so much pain. I don't think of some days I probably couldn't even think straight. But I thank God for being there. I thank God for that battle and that struggle of, like I said, knowing the battle and struggle, but also knowing the remedy of how to get out of it, how, knowing and learning how to really trust and rest in him. Because, you know, I think as independent people and, you know, the world teach us to be these independent people. So, of course, it's already mandated in you that you have to do this, 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 and this to survive. But at the end of the day, when God tried to take it and turn it around that I would trust him instead of trusting me, it was so hard, y'all, it was just so hard for me to trust him, to, you know, if I thought it was going right, and it seemed like he was going to do it, I was happy, but the moment I thought that it was going to fail, I already had a plan A, B, C, all the way down to Z, you know, just to back up the first plan that I had, to make sure that what I needed, I got, 
or to make sure whatever bill needed to be paid, it got paid. But, you know, I'm not saying be lazy. No, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, you know, the Bible word still is true. If you, are, you know, you don't work, you don't eat, you know. But like I said, I think everything is in content. I think everything is in a time and a season about how God is dealing with you. Um, so uh, we, I just tell the people what I believe God is saying at that time. But he said there's too many people struggling. Too many people working so hard when they don't have to work as hard as they're working. You know, um, I'm a firm believer in tithe and offering, and I know that's a, a, a conversation so many people stay away from or so many people don't want to have. I can't tell you how it works for others. I can just tell you that it worked in my life. You know, so uh, I'm a strict stickler for my tithes and offering. Um, so, yes, I do. Um, but it's, it, it works for me, and that's, that I know 100% that that is something that works for me. So I have no doubt in doing it, and I have no problem in doing it. So like I said, when it comes down to struggling and battling, we have to get into the Word of God. We have to know that God's Word is real. You know, in Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29, it said, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. You know, and that... That, that scripture did wonder for me when I got the opportunity to find rest, not um, laziness, but rest, being able to learn and how to trust in God, you know, it was very amazing. It was um, a very powerful thing. But, yeah, it took me through some trials. It took me through some tribulations to get there. But at the end of the day, I learned how to find rest in him, you know, and that's amazing. In Hebrews 4, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 11, and, you know, I know I can read a little fast sometimes. It say, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you shall seem to become short of it. For unto us we, the gospel, is preached, as well unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in it, they did not hear it. For we which believe do enter into rest. And he said, As I have sworn unto my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although their works were finished from the foundation of this world. For he spoke unto a certain place of the seventh day of the wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his work. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it shall remain because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, Today after so long a day, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, heart not your heart, for if Jesus has given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another entering into rest. He also has ceased from his own works, as God did for his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And, you know, for me, I think that's what it was. It was a lot of unbelief. Well, I know that's what it was. I don't think. It was a lot of unbelief in my life that God really could do what God said he could do, that he could take care of me and my children. It was just, you know, something I've been doing all my life, and I was used to doing it, and I don't even know if I wanted to get that job to anyone else. And I think that's how it is with a lot of us as single mothers, as just women, men. We have got so accustomed to being heard and rejected and, you know, not being able to trust people till we put, pick it up and we do it ourselves. And that was my problem. My problem was I just felt like, you know, no, I'll just do it myself. It's so much easier. I ain't got to worry about being disappointed. I ain't got to worry about running back home from, you know, work and getting called on my job. So, you know, if I can just do this myself, then I won't need anyone else or I don't need anybody else. And, you know, I think that's one of the biggest tricks sent from the devil is when you have that mentality that you need no one else. You know, we all need someone else. You know, and I just thank God that he was my portion of that. He was the person that I needed more than I needed anything else, you know, beyond the sickness, you know, because sometimes when you're in sickness, that pain is real. You know, uh, you know, people can tell you, you know, I'm praying for you or the, and anything they want to tell you. But the pain that I was going through, it was 100 percent real and it was horrible pain. But at the end of the day, I stuck on the word of God, you know, because he said that by the stripes of Jesus Christ that I was healed. So I stuck to the word of God. So it's hard to rest when you're used to doing everything for yourself. You have to get to that place where you can find rest. And um, I, like I said, it's not easy. And I can never tell you in 30 minutes all the ways to get to rest. But what I can tell you is God is saying, come unto him. Enter into with his rest. Not your labors, but his rest. You know, so at the end of the day, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you're unsaved, the only way you can enter into his rest is to become saved. You know, um, 
So I never take want to miss an opportunity to offer salvation. So if you don't know him, the Bible says if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose again, that you technically are saved. You know, but I always tell you, go get into a church home, uh, find a church that preaches the word of God, that you can be strong in it and you can read for yourself what the word of God says. So like I said, if you don't know him, get saved on today. Take that word of advice because it was the best thing that I ever have done in my life. It was the best decision that I had ever made. So use that moment um, to come on to God because you can't get to know him if you don't confess that. So um, the first thing you need is to get your salvation. Like I said, the second thing you need is to get into a church that preaches the word of God and um, can help you learn the word of God. Um, for the people that believe, get into your word. Talk to God. Get into your prayer closet. Tell God what all your problems is, all your concerns are. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's what the Bible say, and he really does. And that's what I had to do. That's why I can say the scripture without a thought because I had to do it. I had to give him all my problems, all my rejection, all my hurt, all my pain, all my sickness, all my mistrust. Oh, it was so much to give God. All my stress and um, drama that was going through my family at that time. I had to give it all to him just so I could enter his rest. And like I said, it wasn't nothing that just happened overnight. But I can tell you now, I truly have that peace that passes all understanding to where I can get in a place with God. And I know it's not even a battle anymore. It's not even a situation. If the problem is bigger than me, he's already got it. If the problem is something I can fix, he gives me the wisdom to fix it. But I don't stress over situations like that anymore. I don't uh, be bombarded with uh, simple things anymore that I know God can handle because he said the battle is not mine. It is his. So I had to get to that place. So on today, I just want to let you know, God don't want you struggling with a uh, sickness or a disease. God doesn't want you struggling with finances. God doesn't want you struggling with um, uh, baby mama drama, father drama. I don't care if they ain't paying, taking care of the kids. He doesn't want you struggling with the thought of losing your job, not having a job. Um, he, he don't want you struggling with anything. If you need a home, if you need a car, that's miscellaneous things to God. If you put your trust in him, you know, the Bible say that, you know, his people were like no good thing. And it is ever so true. I have seen God do the miraculous. So I just want to get you to that place on today to let you know. Get into the place of entering God rest. Cast your cares upon God because God cares for you. And the only way you can do that is to get into your word. Get into your prayer closet. Be honest with God. God know everything anyway. So all you have to do is tell him what's going on in your life. And he will he's a good God. He will answer you. You know? So my thing on today is and my prayer on today is going to be asking God to allow you to get into his rest because he won't force himself upon you. That's a place you have to get to on your own. That was the place I had to get to on my own. But I finally got there, and I thank God that I got there because, like I said, without him, mm, I can only imagine where I would be. So I thank him for everything that he has done for me. And, you know, like I said, I want to just take about two or three minutes just to pray because he's an amazing God. And um, I know that he can get you there if you allow it. But so many times, there's so many things stopping us from getting there. Um, and he's a great God. So, Father, we just thank you on today, Lord God. Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, Father. And we'll rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are truly Alpha and Omega. Father, you are the beginning and the end, Lord God. And we worship you on today, Lord God. How I love you, Lord God. How I need you, Father, more than life itself, Lord God. Father, I just want to ask you on today, Lord God, to touch your people, touch the mind of your people, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you give them a mindset, Father, to come unto you, Lord God, and to get rest, Lord God, to cast their cares upon you, Father, because you care for them, Lord God. Father, I thank you that you love them with an everlasting love, Lord God, and I thank you that your people will learn and know it, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, Father, that the battle really does not belong to them, Father, but it belongs to you, Lord God. So, Father, as we take your word, Father, in Matthew 11, will it tell us to come unto you? And because we are all under heavy labor, Lord God, and have burdens, Lord God. But, Father, you said that you would give us rest. So, Father, we're calling your word to your remembrance, Lord God. Father, we want to take upon your yoke because it's easy, Lord God. We want to learn from you, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you are meek and lovely in heart, Lord God. And, Father, you said that you would give our souls rest on today, Lord God. So many people need physical rest, Lord God, but so many more need mental rest, Lord God. 
Allow them, Father, to come unto you, Lord God. Allow them not for their hearts to be heavy, Lord God, not to be worried about sickness and disease, Lord God, not to be worried about finances, Father, not to be worried about their children or grandchildren, Lord God, parents, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, not to be worried about, Lord God, Father, how they're going to make it for tomorrow, Lord God, because you told us to take no cares or no thoughts for tomorrow, Lord God, that it's enough evil in this day, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a God that supply your people need, Lord God, according to the the riches and glory through your son Christ Jesus father I thank you Lord God that you love us like I said father with an everlasting love Lord God and I thank you father that you hear our prayers and that you answer them Lord God so father on today Lord God we want to say have your way in our lives Lord God have our way in our minds Lord God because father we have to offer it to you Lord God so father we give our cares unto you on today Lord God anything that concerns us no matter what the situation is father and father we thank you that it is so Lord God that you're touching the hearts and the minds of your people father and that you are giving them rest father in the name of jesus we pray father we just say thank you lord god and amen on us today lord god oh how we love them and how we need them on today i just want to say thank you on today thank you for coming out i want to make a couple of quick announcements on um, march 25th we're having a single conference for conquerors church you can go to conquerorschurch.org for more information it's going to be on march 25th we're talking about sex bondage and being free um that's for all singles it's going to be at 1495 and nicotine drive out at the homes wood sweets in troy um we hope you can get out there uh, i want to talk about my own event it's called unmasked coming up on june the 10th at the detroit Re um, rescue mission over on forest it's going to be awesome uh, you got to get there tickets are free you just have to register at 313-685-1035 again you have to register at 313-685-1035 Six eight five one zero three five, and again that event is called Unmasked. It is a uh, masquerade dinner th theater. Um, it's going to be really just amazing. Um, so if you get an opportunity, definitely uh, text that number three one three six eight five one zero three five or call, and uh, we'll get you more information on that as well. And like I said, just for the singles, that is going to be I think a great event for the singles. So again, you can go to that website at www.conquerschurch.org g as well um and get more information and they have um marriage uh for the marriage for the singles we have pretty much have groups for any single thing that you need so definitely go to our websites we're doing our wednesday connections like i said at the local tim hortons and panera breads um get out get come on out and check us out and join us like i said in our services um every sunday at 11 a.m right now at the star theater on in clinton township michigan on Gratiot near 15 mile so i just like i said i just hope your weekend is blessed as I always do and I want to say thank you for joining me as always and know that God loves you on today know that God sees you as the apple of his eye no matter what your situation is it's not that bad that you can't come on to God if you if you know him then just draw closer to him stay in your prayer closet in this day and this time because you need to just to overcome the things of everyday life and the things and the cares of this world but I want to tell you again on today that God loves you come unto him Come into the rest of God on today. In Jesus' name, I already prayed it. Now I'm just standing with you and believing God with you that you will find that peace that passes all understanding because you don't have to struggle. In Jesus' name, go home. Like I said, have a blessed weekend. In Jesus' name. Well, as we close, we say thank you for joining us, and we hope you join us next week on the In His Image broadcast. May your week be blessed and full of favor. In Jesus' name.